look good on color fonts. Since this is a color font, we are asked if we want to use this font's palette. Choose yes. Incidentally, you may not always want to choose yes, because this could change the colors of your picture. Now let's try the Cara Granite font that we loaded. If you want to move text once it's on the screen, use the brush selector to pick it up and move it around. If you're adding text to a picture, there are two good tips that you should know. Fix the background before you type the text. This will let you pick up and move the text without messing up the picture. Another way to do this is to jump to the spare screen, type your text, then pick it up as a brush to be placed on your picture. Here's another trick you may want to try. Pick up the text as a brush, select line mode, make a short line using the brush. This gives a three-dimensional effect. The two multicolored fonts included with DPaint 3 are part of a collection of professional fonts called Cara fonts. This collection is available in three packages, headlines, subheads, and headlines 2. Other font sets are available from your Amiga dealer. Even though Deluxe Paint can be used with just menus and without the keyboard commands, basically the design is set up so that it's, it's, it's better if you know how to use the key, keyboard commands. As a matter of fact, there are certain of the keyboard commands that I think people overlook that are essential to really understanding how the program is meant to work. Uh, for instance, uh, the G key to turn on and off the grid, you can go over to the menu and do that, but if you use the key, you can do it while you're in the midst of an operation, such as while you're in the midst of drawing a circle. For instance, if you want to draw a circle with its center at the same point as a, another circle, you can use the grid to center it. And then while you're stretching the circle out, uh, you can use G to turn the grid off and so you're not con constrained by the grid anymore. And another important command is the shift G command which locks the grid to the particular point, point you're at and that's a command that you can only do with a keyboard command because it only makes sense as a keyboard command. Another key for which uh, the only way you can do the function is through the key and which is a very important function is the N key. A lot of people don't know about this. It's really the way you scroll the, the picture in uh, dpaint. Though you can use the scroll arrows, that's awkward. But if you use the N key, what it does is it centers the pixel you're pointing at in both the magnify and the regular window. So by just pointing the N key at a pixel and hitting the N key, you immediately position the picture. You can use this for moving the magnify window around on the picture, say around a border of an object you're editing. And you don't really even have to think about scrolling. You just hit the N key once in a while and you're always centered. There are several new fill types and paint modes in dpaint 3. In addition to half bright, which we discussed earlier, there is the tint, brush, and wrap fill types. Along with the standard flood fill, there is the addition of boundary fill and a special mode which traces the filled shape with a brush. Let's begin with the new boundary fill. To demonstrate this, we'll draw a couple of shapes using various colors. There, that should be okay. Now a normal flood fill will affect all of the area of the same color on which we clicked. Notice how it stops when it reaches any other color? Now let's try the new boundary fill. First, tell dpaint what the boundary color should be. Do that by setting the background color to the desired boundary color. This can be done in several ways, but we'll use the comma key to get into the pick color mode. Using the right mouse button, click on the desired boundary color. Then choose the color to fill with. A normal fill, like this, does not fill the entire area. But since we have set the boundary and paint colors, we can use the boundary fill capabilities. Simply hold down the Alt key when clicking the mouse button. This will fill the entire area within the boundary color with the current paint color. This brings us to the various fill types. In addition to the solid, perspective, pattern, H-bright, and gradient fills, there are three new fill types. They are tint, brush, and wrap. Tint gives the effect of a tinted filter. You may want to review tutorial one in chapter six of your dpaint manual for information on hue, saturation, and value. First, we need to load a picture to apply the tint effect to. From the art disk, we'll choose the picture called Gorilla. Next, we'll access the fill type requester. This can be done by clicking with the right mouse button 
on any of the tools which have a fill mode, or we could use the key equivalent Shift F. We see various fill options from which we choose tint. Next, choose the color with which to tint, in this case blue. Then when we create a filled shape, the area is tinted blue. When D-Paint performs a tint operation, it calculates the RGB values for the new color and then looks in your palette for the closest matching color. As a result, the effect created is dependent on the colors available in the palette. This tin effect is the same as when you draw with a built-in brush and are in the tint paint mode. The tint mode can be used to produce a stained glass or colored filter effect, but you may need to plan an appropriate palette ahead of time to assure that there will be suitable colors available. The other two fill types are brush and wrap. The brush type stretches and distorts a custom brush to fit a filled area. First, create a simple pattern which can be used as a custom brush. Next, bring up the fill requester and choose brush type and click OK. Now make a filled circle. Notice all of our custom brush is here, but it has been stretched and squeezed to fill the circle. Let's compare this with the wrap type of fill. The wrap fill gives a perspective effect while adjusting a custom brush to fill a shape or area. We'll make a circle the same size as before. Now the custom brush looks as though it's being wrapped around a ball. Here are some examples of other shapes and brushes. Now that we've explained fill types, let's look at the new trace function which works in conjunction with filled shapes. Although this function works with built-in brushes, we can demonstrate the function more graphically using a custom brush. To activate the trace option, hold down the Alt key while selecting any of the filled shape tools. This also works with the key equivalents. For example, if we want the trace option active while doing a filled freehand shape, we hold down the Alt and press the D key. Now when we create a filled shape, our area is first filled and then D-Paint goes back and traces the entire filled shape with the current brush. Incidentally, the way the area fills is based on the fill type settings, and the way it is traced is based on the line spacing settings. With the addition of these new fill types and brush modes, almost any fill effect you might need can be accomplished. What got me back into being interested in working on Deluxe Paint was just the idea of what would it be like to have a paint program where you could paint on separate frames of an animation. And so one weekend I sat up late at night and did the, a very simple hack where I could page flip between full pages of, of uh, bitmap and paint on it. And uh, it, was, uh, it was fascinating what you could do with that. But it was also frustrating because I could see that for a person that wasn't an animator, it would take you forever to create an animation. It really required a person with experience in animation and I realized that animation is an order of magnitude harder than just painting a picture. So then I was hooked. I had to figure out a, for myself a way to make it easier to create some sort of animations with this thing. Well the result of this was I'd say another year and a half of work programming up basically the animation capabilities into Deluxe Paint. So along the way I was able to put in a lot of things I've been wanting to have in the program such as overscan editing and half bright, all these things. But the main thing was animation. This segment will introduce you to Deluxe Paint's animation features. We will begin by explaining the basic concept of animation and then cover each of the ways to create animation with Deluxe Paint 3. The basic idea of animation is that you have multiple pages that you can paint on and flip through. By creating images that differ slightly from page to page and then playing them back in rapid succession, the illusion of motion is created. First, we'll create an object to move. Let's draw a small airplane. We'll pick up our airplane as a brush and then clear the screen. Now that we have our object, the first step in building an animation is to create some frames to paint on. Choose Frames Set Number from the Anim menu. Click in the Count Edit field, change the frame count to 10, and click OK. We now have 10 frames to paint on. Notice the numbers 1 slash 10 at the left side of the menu bar 